Uh, my name's Sophie McFarland-Smith. I'm actually the head of customer engagement for uh, Rolls-Royce SMR Limited. So it's a great pleasure to come and talk to you this morning. Hopefully someone will be putting my slides on the screen. And I want to start by congratulating Fermi Energia on your third birthday. Uh, uh, certainly uh, it's a great occasion and, and I think you should be rightly proud of everything you've achieved in just three years. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about Rolls-Royce SMR Limited and also what we're doing in the UK, but not just in the UK, because the programme that we are looking at is, is global. Um, so first of all, a quick question, who is Rolls-Royce SMR Limited? So hopefully maybe most of you in the room will have heard of Rolls-Royce SMR. Rolls-Royce SMR Limited is a new company, a new technology vendor um, that uh, was formally launched in November last year. So um, I just want to start by saying that as a technology vendor, we are slightly different in the nuclear industry. We are not selling a nuclear reactor. We are selling a complete power station. So of course, part of that power station happens to be a nuclear reactor. But one of the lessons we took from looking at the nuclear industry is if you really want to manage the cost and the deployment of a nuclear of nuclear technology, you need to look at the complete power station and not just the nuclear reactor, because the nuclear reactor only represents about 25% of the overall cost of the entire power station. So if you really want to manage costs of nuclear, you've got to look at the whole power station. And that's what we're doing. We're providing a complete power station. And who is Rolls-Royce SMR Limited? So we have four shareholders in the company. We have Rolls-Royce um, group, uh, who you may well have heard of. What you may not know is that Rolls-Royce have been designing, manufacturing, operating and servicing small nuclear reactors for over 60 years. So uh, we have been building those on behalf of the UK government um, and the UK's operating nuclear fleet, uh, submarine fleet, and we have facilities existing um, that actually manufacture those in the UK. Alongside Rolls-Royce SMR, we are very pleased to have three shareholders. Um, we have Exelon Generation. Um, again, many of you will have heard of Exelon Generation. They are the largest private operator of nuclear fleet in the world. Um, and they have chosen, after their due diligence, to invest in the Rolls-Royce SMR technology. Um, they are also, we also have BNF Resources, who are a private investment firm, oil and gas firm, um, with extensive investments also in energy and in the uranium sector, and they have chosen to invest in Rolls-Royce SMR. And alongside them, we have the Qatar Investment Authority, who are, are obviously a sovereign, sovereign wealth fund and invest extensively in uh, energy transition projects. So at the back end of last year, um, we co confirmed our investment portfolio, an overall investment, private investment of around 280 million. Um, and that is further supplemented by a government grant from the UK government of £210 million, um, uh, which gives us just over half a billion euros to uh, 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 con con uh, continue with our programme. So we are now fully funded to take us through to the next stage of our programme development. And just some quick words about what is the SMR? What is the Rolls-Royce SMR? So we are a 470 megawatt net uh, output. So again, there is a question about whether we're actually small. We're small in size, physical size. We're not small in output. And that's deliberately so we maximize the energy output for uh, the cost. We've got a 50 hertz design ready to go. So we don't need to translate from 60 hertz to 50 hertz. The design's ready to go. And within our power station, we are uh, using standard understood P PWR technology and fuel. Um, obviously, we're looking at future innovations and future designs, but if you want to reduce licensing risk, if you want to reduce uh, deployment risk, you go for what everyone knows and understands, and that's what we've done. And as I've said already, our power station is a turnkey project, so if you want a Rolls-Royce SMR, you come to Rolls-Royce SMR Limited, and we will do everything. So you don't need to find a constructor, you don't need to find anything else. We've got the design for the complete power station, and we will come as a single company and deliver the complete power station. 
Um, four years on-site construction, um, and we can achieve that because around 90% of the overall plant is factory fabricated. So we, in terms of our approach to modularization, we are modularizing the entire power station, not just the nuclear reactor. The entire power station is being modularized into modules, built in factories, tested in factories, um, and then it can be brought to site where, because we have a, uh, a compact site, we will actually have a fourth factory. We, we construct our units or assemble our units under a site canopy, under a fourth factory, um, and, then, and then we, we uh, manage the risk of deployment and we can bring it down to a, around a four-year on-site construction. Uh, we've got all uh, the uh, safety and security that you would expect and, uh, and require, and we are anticipating our first unit to be on grid in the early 2030s uh, for a capital cost of uh, around 2 billion euros, and that is 2 billion, 2.3 for the entire power station. Um, uh, obviously, we're, we've got power output that's adaptable. Now, interestingly, as many others have talked about, when we started the project in around 2016, we assumed that most of our power stations would be on grid and used for electricity. Actually, what we found as we're going out to market, that the biggest interest is from industrial companies and governments who are looking to decarbonize other sectors. So those who want to decarbonize uh, not just um, uh, electricity production, but also the production of synthetic fuel the production of hydrogen. Um, many, many uh, uses of SMRs are out there, and we're now actually finding that the largest market is likely to be off-grid for the production of uh, other forms of energy. And in terms of the cost, which is obviously the critical thing, we are looking at a range of around 39 to 56 euros per megawatt hour. Uh, and, and that is uh, obviously commensurate with other forms of low carbon power. So again, quite a different approach to delivering nuclear. And the reason we've taken this approach is because if we really want to make nuclear count in the fight against climate change, we need to make nuclear easier to deliver. We need to make nuclear uh, a risk-reduced project. We need to move away from the traditional model. So we are moving away from large EPC contracts where you have to find every project needs a new designer, every project needs a new supply chain. Uh, we are moving down, down, looking at actually what the market needs, what the market requirements are, factory fabricating, uh, the vast majority of uh, the actual uh, project, uh, the actual equipment, standardizing it um, so it's factory repeatable, giving schedule certainty because of the way uh, we construct, and then having commercial simplification, which means that you have a single contract with one company to deliver your entire power station. And we deliver it in what we call a EMA contract, engineering, manufacturing and assembly contract. So it's moving away from the old traditional model of nuclear and moving to something much more repeatable, much more predictable. And actually it becomes a commodity product, which is what we need if we really want it to solve the problem of giving everyone lots of electricity and lots of heat for a variety of uses to decarbonize the sector. And what's our focus? So we, uh, as well, in effect, we're a very new company. Even though we may have a very long heritage, we're a very new company. And what is our focus now? So we are focusing on completing the design and regulatory approval. So you may well have heard we have now entered the UK's generic design assessment process. So we are uh, going forward with that process, which will take a period of years. Um, we're also completing the IAEA's generic reactor safety review uh, because, of course, we are looking at deploying this plant not just in the UK but everywhere in the world. So the plant is specifically designed to meet as many different regulatory requirements for our, our target markets around the world at the same time, which means we can obviously replicate our production. 
um, and we're looking to go through those two uh, generic safety reviews um, and then obviously complete our verification and validation program. But alongside that, that's obviously an awful lot of engineering work that needs to be done, but alongside that are the really, really important steps of building the business. We are building a business for global deployment. So we are looking at markets all around the globe and we have vast interest in SMRs and particularly in our solution, which is ready-made and good to go and simple to uh, deliver. We're looking at a scalable supply chain because obviously our factory solution where we'll, we'll have three main factories for the plants that can produce around two plants per year. But then of course the more plants that we deploy we will just scale the factory model and scale our supply chain. Now of course anyone who knows anything about Rolls-Royce will know that we are known for our manufacturing. This is a model that we are very used to, very comfortable with. Um, and it's a scalable model for global production. Uh, we're looking at regional hubs for our factories. Uh, we're uh, developing our turnkey delivery solution, and we're looking at flexibility for all of the different types of applications that people are inquiring about. We're engaging with our customers, uh, a massive amount of our, our work, and certainly for me. Um, so many, many governments and state utilities, but also increasingly heavy industry uh, for power and heat and hydrogen and synthetic fuels. So, so obviously Rolls-Royce particularly has an interest in synthetic aviation fuel and we're doing work in that area. But there are also other types of uh, synthetic fuels and hydrogen. So um, engaging with our customers, understanding exactly what they want and how we can tailor our solution to make sure that the output from their uh, requirements is economical, as economical as it can be. We're preparing for manufacturing, so really important for us. As soon as we exit GDA, our factories will be up and ready to begin production. Um, and we are consulting on our initial factory sites at the moment. That process has begun. And we are engaging and contracting with our suppliers for the complete power station. So that process is already underway. Um, some of our key suppliers are already under contract. And we are engaging with the wider supply chain to fill uh, the supply chain requirements we need to begin to begin manufacture. And then what's really important as well is creating a framework to realize projects quickly. So there are some locations and some territories where there is a, a, a state operator or a government who is ready to go, wants to buy the plant, and the process for deploying that plant is well understood. In many territories, including the UK, that state operator doesn't exist. There is no natural customer that you can go to. And, and that's also the case for many of the new uh, industries who are coming into the market and understanding that this nuclear technology may be suitable for them. So actually what we're doing is we're doing work bringing together ourselves as the technology, we're looking at sites, we're looking at where the finance would come from, we're looking at what operator would be required, what offtake agreements would be set up, which customers we have who want that power, uh, and what licensing approach is necessary. And we're bringing those groups together to start to develop the projects and say, OK, you, the, we bring all the different groups together, put them together, and actually create programs and projects out of that. And that is a much faster approach to deploying projects. Now, that's obviously an approach that we need to develop for the UK, but it's also a pr an approach that's very relevant to many, many different countries and different markets. Um, so once we have that approach, we can use that and replicate that in many different countries. So we've got exciting times ahead for us in terms of where we're going. Um, and as I say, we're on track to have the first project realized in the early 2030s. So I look forward to working with Fermi Energia and many of you going forward over the next decade. Thank you very much.